Hello there listeners, welcome back to For The Fan Shows, where we'll be discussing why Harry Kane is taking corners, why Aaron Ramsey's hair is so bright, what was the message for the opening ceremony, what was Laurent Canna doing, and finally, why did Thierry Henry tell us about all the exciting things happening on Sky, only to then spend the summer watching the Euros with the BBC, find out <laughs> in today's For The Fan Show. Hello boys, you didn't know I was going to do that, did you? Yeah, I like that. I mean, that's that the reason I no that, longer do the intros. Is that a new thing? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just, you know, it might be, yeah, I think I, think I might incorporate that now from now on uh, flow. we're back with a bang people uh, so then it's it's begun everyone it has begun preview shows are over it's officially started hey. Uh, hey. as ever I am joined by Callum Keane hi Keane good afternoon and uh, Jack's back everyone <laughs> yeah hello I've recovered <laughs> uh, the wine your tasting return. voice has gone I now the have cider taste. to watch the football in the most English manner possible with sausage rolls Excellent. Life's yeah, good. Jack, Jack, Jack did take the sentence before we started recording of, oh, but two seconds, boys, I just need to open my punnet of sausage rolls, which is one of the most middle class things Jack's ever said. And uh, yeah, I think we enjoyed it. So, we'll, what we're going to do, folks, for all of these uh, sort of sort of review shows, if anything, aren't they? Because we'll talk a little bit about what's to come, but we'll focus mainly on what's happened, um, is do it in chronological order. So, we'll start with the host nation France and the performance keynote of Dimitri Payet. Weren't bad, was it? Well,. I, I, oh, yeah. hold on, everyone. kino has got a questionable thought. Well, I don't, oh, I don't think it... No, sorry, everyone. This has what? been a horrendous start to the podcast. Why? Because I've forgot... Do, 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 do. Did you do Boom. that on purpose, Ben? No, nah, I didn't. The, oh. <laughs> the, feature, the feature's back, everyone. Can I get a clap for the feature? We're only joking. The, feature's back. the feature is here. Yeah, everyone thought go. the feature was gone. Yeah. Okay, so the way this is going to uh, work, depending on how many shows we do... Uh, each show is worth a different quantity of points. So, show one, one point. Okay, question's quite easy. One point. Next time round, two points. So, the further we get in, the more the questions mean, people. The more Ooh. the questions mean. And so then, obviously, we're competing to to win the, the Euros, aren't we? Yeah, you will, you will actually... A nation will win it, and Jack and Kino will have won the Euros as well. So uh, we'll get we'll, we'll do a bit of a John Terry, get our kits on, and we'll be up now, there on the podium. As mentioned, today's questions relatively easy, maybe. Um, so I don't think too much of them, but they will get harder as we go on. Who would like to go first? I've got an order of questions. Uh, I like will to volunteer first? to go first. Okay, Jack, ready? Not really, but hit me. Okay, which Shaka brother is older? I mean, there's a 50-50 chance here, isn't there? <laughs> yes, Jack, there is. Is this something that I, I feel like they mention this in the commentary of the game? As I say, quite a relatively easy question. Can I just name the nationality or do I need the first name? <clears throat> um, I mean... Oh. I think you're okay with nationality. Yeah. I, think I understand French. you don't know Toulon Jacques' name, so... Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Right. Is it Toulon uh, or is it Granite? Now, I know that Granite is the Swiss one, and I know yeah. that... I feel like well, he's... You in should his, know that, Jack. I, think he, I feel like he's 24, 25. That's probably completely wrong. Okay. Right. The issue I've got is... No clue on the other brother, like that's whatsoever. Why, that's, why the, that's why it's a feature, Jack. That's why it's a feature. <sighs> We're gonna need an answer. I mean, yeah, I'm, go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with. It's only for one point as well. So I feel like the the Albanian Jack are probably held Albanian. out to get pulled up for Switzerland for longer, and then he realised, well, that's not happening. I'll go play for Albania. So Come I'm gonna on. go with Granite as being younger. <laughs> Literally not the question, but you are. Well, I'll, I'll say this, Jack. You are uh, Granite Jacker. Is twenty three, and Tulant Shaka is twenty five. So yes. well go. done, you got it right. I now, the most long winded way to answer a fairly simple so the, question. So Sorry, yeah. I want to <laughs> explain my logic. Fifty fifty, blimey. Uh, Kino, over to you now. Uh, Fran- right. France beat Romania uh, in the opening game. We'll talk about that in just a second. Did they? But who had more shots? Ooh. Um, do you want me to explain my thinking like Jack? I mean, yeah, let's drag this out. Uh, no, I think it's a sort of reverse trick question. I think it was France. Okay. Romania had 10 shots. France had more than that, surely. France had 14 shots. Yeah. So, Kino, levels of scoring. So, that is the feature. Show one, it's 1-1. One, one. 
but it's only going to get tougher. But oh, is that it? It's just one. Just one question. I mean, he did ah. explain this at the start. I did, yeah. No, but so I thought show, you meant each. Show I thought you meant each quiz counted for more. <laughs> That's why show I was two. striking it out longer. <laughs> show two, two questions, both worth two points. Show three, ah, three questions, both all worth three points. So it will get tense, people. We're in the early stages of the feature, but believe me, by show seven, ho, 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 Jack's going to mess it up, big style. <laughs> right then. Um, Let's talk about the football then. We'll go straight to France Romania, the opening game. Or should we talk about the opening ceremony? Which was I mean in my notes I've got it written down weird. I've got I a confession. Mean, I turned it on, thought this looks weird, and went and made a pizza. Okay. That was yeah, that was I my opening expert. I, I didn't watch all of the opening ceremony. I just think like why would you get David get you could have had like Daft Punk coming out the centre circle, <laughs> rising out of the pitch. You could there was so many different options, but they went with David Getter and Zara Larson, who isn't even sweet uh, French. And yeah. yeah, I wasn't really. Uh, I thought it was Mendieta for about five minutes. I, <laughs> I don't even. Know, I don't even know it was. <laughs> David it Guetta. was one. It, it was one of the most underwhelming opening ceremonies I think I can remember. I quite enjoyed yeah. the Rio one. That no, was not the yeah the Brazil one. I think as well. Partly, I was comparing it to the Olympic one that we had. Yeah, obviously, which yeah. was amazing, and like it, it was, it was fine, but it didn't warrant exclusive coverage. No, I feel no. like that was the that was the thing. With no, it. I feel like it's never going to live up to the Olympic ceremony kind of opening. Was like the yeah, China. That's the one new was standard, mental. Jack. There's, we've set a new standard of Olympic. Did, Olymp- did, you, of did you know during the Chinese like Olympics when they did the opening ceremony because there were so many people involved in it, they had to give them nappies because they couldn't have toilet breaks because there was too many people involved in the ceremony <laughs> for rehearsals. I, think I have heard that. Actually, Fact yeah. of the day. Right, move on. Oh dearie me. Well, nappies. Chinese nappies. It, it no, took Chinese nappies. One, one, one podcast. That that'll be the name of this podcast. Chinese nappies. I mean, that's going to be confusing for the listeners. So let's <laughs> yeah, not do no. that. Um, but into the game, then. I think the French, the French looked okay. I don't think they looked overly convincing. They're one of the favourites of the tournament. But I touched on it before we did the feature. Uh, you know, Dimitri Payet or Payet actually. It's been confirmed now. It's Payet. <laughs> Thierry Henry rang him and asked Payet, him, and he said yeah. it's Payet. Uh, okay, so Dimitri Payet. Played extraordinarily well and scored a cracking goal. Well, I'd, yeah, he, his goal was fantastic, and you could see how much it meant to him as he came off crying. I, I don't really think that any of the French players had an outstanding game. I guess Pyatt was the best of a fairly sort of lukewarm bunch, really. Mm. Uh, and, and honestly, comparing the French and English performances, I don't think they were drastically similar. I just think that the French happened. Um, maybe You'd be drastically slightly. different there. By the way. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think they were too different. Um, with the French arguably playing a slightly worse team um, than we were. Um, and I think that obviously they just had that extra little bit of quality to decide the game. Um, I, I, other than that, I think um, I was quite disappointed. I, I mentioned Antoine Griezmann as I went to much before the tournament. I was quite disappointed with how he played. I thought Pogba was quite... Um, quiet, and I think really, it, although this is this was the case, and you often see this the case with the host team in the first game, don't you? Really, where they're mm. a little bit cagey. That obviously the nerves are playing, as the as the pressure of the country is all on them. Uh, they did quite well to get three points, really. I don't, I think that's pretty much how they'd want it, um, without really putting in a stellar performance. Yeah. Um, what did you think of France, Jack? They, I thought Kino kind of touched on it there. I thought they looked quite nervy, but I also don't think the Champs set it up correctly. I mean, I can, we'll come on to that in a moment. I'll talk about that. But what was your view of it? Um, it was a, a weird game. I I expected a lot more from France. And to be fair to Romania, I think they be, kind of performed beyond a lot of people's expectations. Did, yeah. And I think they're very unfortunate that really, other than like a stroke of genius from Payet, they would have got a point from this game, which I'm sure they would have bitten anyone's hand off at the start of the game. Um, mm. I was surprised with how... I don't want to say attacking Romania were, because they were very much set up to sit behind the ball. But when they were going forward, they did look very impressed. I was very impressed by, I think it's Andron, uh, or Andone, the, 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 the yeah. in the Spanish second tier. He looked, like, pretty capable. I actually thought that... I, I was surprised that Rami started, to be honest, for France. Well, this is the thing with their... And we talked about this in the previews. You know, They are thin at, in the centre-half region, with Sacco and uh, Varane, obviously, being out. Um, and he's played... He's stuck with Rami quite a lot um, when they have had this shortage and I know we mentioned it would um, Koscielny and who's Mangala the, the third? Well, could be we, yeah, Mangala, we yeah. that, that could be the potential one uh, and I think after after we did do that show looking back 
um, Rami is the one that he likes to stick with, and I'm not sure that is always the best choice. I actually, I didn't think really Rami was that much. bad for poor portions no. of this game. Obviously, that against penalty against a very poor attacking team, though. Oh, Romania, of course, didn't offer much. I mean, Evra's Evra had a bit of a man. You know, you, you expect him to be an experienced player in that French side, a player who's been there, seen it, got the postcard. He's, you know, he's played in some of the biggest leagues in Europe. And he gives away just such a silly... I don't know if it's an intent... It doesn't really look intentional, the penalty. It's just kind of a lazy leg mm. that just gets stuck yeah, out. Yeah, I'd, I'd describe it as lazy. It, and, it looked lazy. And it's like, with with Romania, I don't even get many people thought they score from open play, but as soon as that penalty kind of came their way, you almost felt like they deserved it a little bit. You talked about the fact that Romania had 10 shots. It's actually a lot more than I expected them to get in this game. Yeah. And um, I, d- I don't know. All in all, I was impressed by Romania, but France, they looked like they were missing something, and I couldn't quite put my finger on exactly what it was. There the well, just wasn't mm. quite right about how they were laid out, their actual performance as a team. I feel, I, I feel I, like they lacked Shall so, so I tell you why I think, Jack? Shall I tell you why I think Hit they me. look like that? The, the way Deschamps set it up was really interesting. I think we, we sort of talked about the defence. I think they're quite vulnerable at the back, actually. I don't, I don't think they're anywhere near as strong as we actually thought they were. But that said, defensive partnerships in tournaments get better. Like traditionally, they'll get better. Rami and Koscielny will play together more and more. I don't know how many times they've played together before, but I bet it's not more than like five or six times. Like I can't imagine yeah. it being that much. The problem for me was the midfield. I thought Kante was excellent. He was, um, yeah. And, and I thought Matuidi was a bundle of energy. The issue really was Paul Pogba, who for me was playing too deep, and it looked like the, the idea was to play Kante in the holding roles, uh, clearing everything up, and having Matuidi on one side and Pogba on the other. And putting Pogba in... Such sort of it was so systematic. It was like you're going to play there, you're going to play there, and I actually think Pogba will thrive more when he's freed up a little bit. I don't know if it was just a shump saying right, it's the first game you want to get through this. We want to just get a win under our belts yeah, and then unleash so. a little bit because I, th- I did think they looked nervous. But I thought as soon as Pogba went, out, it was it was telling really, wasn't it, that Pogba went off and all of a sudden France opened up a little bit. Pay had far more space to play in, and it, and it, like you think about where Pay scored his goal from, that was predominantly where P- uh, Pogba was playing. On, I that, also on that think, side I also think because they started with the 4-3-3 obviously with Giroud down the centre who I thought did pretty well um, I, think he did, Rick, I think he did it well for a bit I think he started quite poorly though I thought he looked sluggish he grew into the, the game he certainly yeah, grew into the game um, uh, that front three with Griezmann Giroud and then Payet I think is quite unbalanced as well you mentioned the midfield I agree in the fact that Pogba should really be in the number 10 but I think also and, and this is this is the problem that Deschamps will have going forward I think Payet looked much better um, and allows France to control the game more when he is in down the centre as well. Um, yeah. Personally, I mean, I, he he's had some success for West Ham doing this out wide, but I do think in it, for this French team, um, if you're assuming that Pogba's going to go over there, my Tweedy's going to be the shuttler, and Kante's going to be sitting quite back, far, I, quite far can back. Can I just pick up on up. that just quickly? I was Matuidi traditionally is a lot more of a defensive player, and over this last season, he likes to P- break forward though. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. But for PSG, up until really this year, he was a lot more of a defensive player alongside Verratti, whereas this year he actually pushed on a little bit more. Mm. And I almost I feel I think like... He's got, I think he's got better, though. I think it's part of him oh, just becoming a better player. Oh, for player. sure. I, but I feel like when you've got Matuidi and Kante, like, there is literally no reason not to tell Pogba, do whatever you want in between That's them what and go on ahead. That's whereas they kind of sat with Kante as the you know the rock in the middle of the, of the free in midfield. Matuidi off to the left, Pogba on the right. I feel like that's wrong. I feel like Matuidi is experienced in playing a system with two defending midfielders with Verratti. Yes, he's good going forward. And perhaps against you know a Romania team, you can tell Matuidi to go on a little bit more. But I feel like Matuidi and Kante have a potential to be a really solid kind of midfield yeah. unit, particularly in the bigger games. And let Pogba have that impact that he can have, you know, surging on forward, having this free roam role off, you know, uh, as Yuru, and really like take the game to whoever France are playing. And I think it's a shame that in this game as you said it almost looked like he was very much restricted and told do yeah. this and you know nothing else and uh, and I think that I think that um, demonstrates the sort of selection dilemma that Deschamps have because I, I, I think that that would be good in the bigger games and they'll probably have to, to maybe move Pogba forward um, in the same way that sort of like a Mourinho would move Fabregas forward at Chelsea when they were playing a good team do you know what I mean play with two stronger midfielders I think he'll move um, Kante and, and Matuidi further back a little bit but then you run into the dilemma of how do you accommodate Payet, Pogba and Griezmann or behind you well, know, the central striker I was going to say think, who, do they, who do they change Kino who do they, they, I, I don't think that will be the same lineup that plays against Albania on Wednesday no exactly that, yeah that is, the, that is the problem that Deschamps faces and I, and I think that there's definitely room for the pace of Martial to come in there for sure mm. um, uh, uh, but as you say whoever comes out it's difficult because Payet 
basically, I mean, he he's, he really made a firm stake uh, for his you know his name uh, to be one of the first on the team sheet for France going forward, uh, uh, particularly after that game. Um, and so you you have to look at Griezmann. He didn't play well. It, I mean, it's it's a good problem for Deschamps to have in the sense that everyone will be hungry, but um, it does it does make a few decisions quite difficult for him. Um, mm. Can, as to who to play. Can I just yeah. bring up one quick question before presumably we move on because we have talked about this game a lot but it was yeah, the ending yeah, yeah. it was quite interesting you know to have one of the favourites. Why is it Moussa Sinsoko is he just one of the best players in the world and no one but Deschamps knows it because he was awful for Newcastle this year he's been subbed on in this game I think people were surprised he was in the squad. Like yeah. is, well, is, is well, he just really Lacazette. lazy in England? Like do we, we just not see a lot of him? Options. We talk about forward options. Lacazette must be pretty pissed that Sissoko has made it into the squad ahead of him, and but they he, haven't got. He has thirty nine caps, and he's twenty six. Like, I know, I know. is he is he really good? And he just plays crap in Newcastle. Know. I've never heard Newcastle fans say anything good about him. I want to see him play a game and show us what he's about. I think there was a there was a period for Newcastle in which he did play really really well. I indicative think the last of a of seasons, yeah. indicative of a wider problem for Newcastle, where too many of their players will just play for moves at certain times yeah. of the year. I think. I think uh, he he has runs so, of form. Yeah, I was going to say. I think the biggest thing for France is though they're the holders or the holders. Sorry, they're the, they're the hosts. They've won their opening game. That is essentially job done, and they can go now against Albania, play a bit more relaxed. I mean, we'll come on to Albania, Jack. What was he doing? What was Laurent Canna doing? When I he, loved I, I the mean, second handball, well, the mean, second just, yellow. It, it looked like he so tried weird. to hide it. He looked like a fish out of water. It was a bit like uh, Stephen Taylor for Newcastle that time, but on the floor. So he's always oh, on the floor, sure. and then he just handles it, and then he does sort of that classic thing of getting up, protesting, but everybody knows what you've done, mate. So you can't really protest. Okay. And at that point... It was it was a relatively even game. I think a lot of people felt like Albania might even get back into it. Yeah, the, the Swiss looks all right. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, I don't think they yeah. looked any more than that. I, I wasn't particularly impressed with how they played. Um, and I think that I think the Swiss are slightly overrated by sort of the media and commentators, to be honest, because they while they do have some excellent individuals, you have to think that England beat them twice very comfortably, really, uh, in qualifying. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, and and maybe they perform better in tournaments and, the, and they don't have the kinds of pressure from the public etc that, that the England team do but comparing those two teams directly uh, I feel like the Swiss are slightly pumped up from, from what they are and I think that was demonstrated by again a fairly lacklustre performance against Albania Yeah, I think, I think they're a bit fortunate that they've scored after five minutes I think the fear though Jack is that for for an hour, they failed to break down a ten man Albania, and, they, and as, as, as sort of as strong as Albania looked with ten men, we, it was strange actually. They played arguably better with ten than they did with eleven. Oh, for sure, Sommer um, had a great game for Switzerland in goal as well. Really. Yeah, well, he made that one save, didn't he? Which was which was really good. Uh, first of all, going forward, I mean, their next game's against Romania. Get get anything there, you pretty much guarantee you're going through. Well, even with three points, you have a pretty good chance of going through. It's really weird this system because obviously I think I think four, four kind of sells you, you the in like four a top two best place, third though. place teams go through. Yeah, it, and the people are talking about oh, if you get a win, you're kind of through already. And it's yeah, it, it's obviously for Switzerland. It, it, I feel like if you win your opening game as any team in this competition, there is a massive burden lifted off your shoulders. No matter what team you are, even if the expectations are really low. Because it just gives you such a great chance your remaining two games to go through, even if you get nothing from either of them. Yeah. I'm not sure I like that either as well. I think it's oh, of, yeah. I must place. admit it's a little bit of a weird system. But I think for Switzerland going forward, they'll look at this game. It was job done. Was it convincing? Not really. I thought Albania really impressed me. If I'm honest, I thought at half time, no chance they're getting back into this. But they grew in the game with ten men. They played superbly. They had chances to win. If we're being mm, honest, yeah. they could have easily scored two goals with some of the chances they had. Mm. And it's, a, I think, a problem that plagued them in their qualifying, where I think they got something like seven goals or eight goals from eight qualifying games, where yeah. they were averaging a goal a game, which to, to qualify for the competition with that kind of record is somewhat phenomenal. I can't say yeah. that word. You, phenomenal. phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. You, you, you wonder, <laughs> though. Phenomenal. You, you wonder. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're calling the podcast. Um, you wonder You wonder with Albania now, though, what will happen with them. Their most experienced player, their captain, arguably their best player, will now miss the game, their next game against France. It's it's a massive issue for them. But will it, will it galvanise them? You know, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? They can go one of two ways. Is, is he so important? Or will they take the performance without him and think, do you know what? Actually, we don't need him. I, we don't I believe need him his name is pronounced Sana. I've got a great story Sana, to tell Kana, about Sana? him as well. It is Sana, yeah. I, Sana? I, Sana. Um, I, 
it's really difficult to say because he he is a player that they rely on so much um, in terms of just organising and, and and they may need that I think because they've still got France to play. Do they play France next or France um, next? Yeah, France next. Yeah, I feel as though in that game they'll they'd need him more than they would if they were playing Romania when perhaps they might be attacking a little bit more and, and they could maybe be a little bit more free flowing. I mean, neither of those two teams are particularly adventurous, so you would expect him, them to really need him for that France game so yeah. it is unfortunate it was a silly decision it was it was really sort of mindless I think uh, it's yeah. kind of it's not really what you'd expect from your captain in that situation I, thought. I think he was weighing up the do we want to concede another or am I going to have mm. to just take a red card here or take take a certain yellow card there obviously he was already booked um, for this group I feel like it's pretty much gone as we'd expect it looks like it's going to come down to the final game between Albania and Romania to see if either of them can pinch a, th- like a third place. Three points might not be enough. I think four will definitely be enough. Three points, when you look at the other well, groups, What might happens not be if enough. one team gets three points in one group and finishes like third, and then in another group a team gets three points? Like- well, it, it's it's compared to two other groups. So, like, you compared with three... Within three... So, three groups get compared against each other, and then you, but then you get two chances. So, so, for example, group A could be compared to C and E, but it could also be compared to, like... F and B or something like that. I mean, it's very, it's yeah, why do anything logical, right? Why keep yeah, it simple? It's, it's quite confusing. I assume it goes down to things like goal scored. I, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, why it's if based that's on all even, do we get? A pl- I love a playoff. It never happens. Alphabetical in there. order. The old alphabetical straws. Order. Bring the straws out. There was a World Cup qualifier that once was decided by a coin flip. I think it was it the Car- in the Caribbean area years ago yeah, now. It was. I've, I've got sense. a story about Sana for you. All right, we'll wrap up on this. When it's he first signed for Sunderland, he went missing for two days. Like he signed, right. got in a car, went missing, and they couldn't find him. It turned out he's a massive history buff, and he went to Hadrian's Wall for the weekend and didn't tell anyone. Oh, so wow. he just vanished. Anyway, I like that. That's the story. I've got to be honest, better story than I was anticipating. Can't believe yeah. he's a big historian, but yeah, there we are. Um, now, speaking of teams that have done the job, got the win, and will now look to press on from that, Wales, everybody. Or Jack calls them Bales, because Bales. he's very controversial. I, it's annoying um, people on Twitter, that one. I'm sure it is. <laughs> uh, they've got a very important win, but it started quite... I mean, we said the French looked a little bit nervous. I, I dare say, for that first mm. ten minutes before the Bale free kick, Wales looked a tad nervous. And, and Marek Hamsik, you know, went on... I mean, without scoring, that's one yeah. of the tournament. It would have, yeah, it would have been one of the best goals of the tournament um, already. Uh, yeah. I don't think many would have beaten it, and I think Wales just led such a charm life in those first sort of fifteen minutes. Obviously, with the free kick, that was the best possible thing that could have happened um, for the Welsh team because yeah. not only was it their main man Bale scoring, and that takes a bit of pressure off his shoulders to the point where he can sort of relax and and try and play his best game going forward. It also, you know, it got them in front uh, and it just settled all the nerves. It was, it was, it was. It, I mean, the goal shouldn't really have been a goal because the keeper sort of shifted his weight to the left. Quite similar to the uh, to Dyer's free kick we can talk about that in a little bit yeah. but the keeper sort of um, both keepers made a sort of shift to their left uh, and left the, the kind of the right hand um, post open um, and, it, and it led to uh, quite a soft two very soft free kicks I thought that weren't really incredibly well do struck we, do we feel with, with Bale's free kicks when they hit like that do we feel like he's playing to the fear of the keeper that he's mm. going to be beat on the side where he's left his wall I feel like I feel like Bale knows full well that, but it can, but it's, it's the kind of thing though that only works once. So it'd be interesting to see if he scores another free kick in the tournament in this in the same style at least. The thing is hitting hitting it, taking it in that style, the kind of knuckleball style that Ronaldo does a quite. Can someone can please someone knuckleball. explain that to commentators that it's called a knuckleball? Because I hate it when they're going, oh, he just hits it like Ronaldo. It's like it does have a name. Yeah, just because Ronaldo um, does it, that's not the name of it. Oh, it's the thing just, that Ronaldo just link did. Them, link them, Janino, Panavicano, and just yeah. let them see that a little bit. But when hitting it like that, it is quite difficult to sort of dip it up and over the wall. Like you say, a lot of those goals come from hitting it to the to the other side of the wall, to the open side, as it were, uh, and sort of confusing the keeper. Um, and it, if Bale tries to do that again. It will be interesting to see how the keeper sort of sets up his wall. It may be worth trying to bamboo, like bamboozle him, and, and sort of moving the wall the other side, even. Well, or maybe even maybe say, leaving it near post. Possibly, yeah. Well, if you don't uh, have a wall, you can see it the whole way. Yeah, get everyone I on the goal line, sort it. It is, it's a, ge- it is a genuine thing, and I'm surprised that no teams we've seen sort of have tried doing that against a free kick taker like that. Because realistically, if you think about it, you know, a shot from 30 yards out, you'd bat the keeper to save that in open play a lot of the time, wouldn't you? I really? feel like I know why there's not. Again, I feel like because if they don't put a wall and he just bags it in, everyone's gonna go. We should have put a wall there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's I like, know. But it's you sound like that, Donald Trump there should have built a wall. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump's going, we need a wall. No, but come on, look, we've just seen Bell take free kicks, build the wall. Okay. All the Welshmen are coming yes, across Donald. the wall. Yeah. Um, the Duda goal, it kind of, do I dare say it came out a little bit of nothing? I thought Slacky had a good spell, but it was just sort of, it happened, and then the game sort of it went through a, a sticky patch of not a lot happening. The, I the like. good Slovakia spell came after that goal that it sort of galvanised them. Really, as you say, I, I agree. Up until that point, the substitution came on. I thought Slovakia was sort of meandering along a little bit. They didn't really look like they they had the urgency to go and uh, get an equaliser, let alone win the game. When that goal went in, it then sparked maybe a, a fifteen minute spell in that second half where Wales were, were on the ropes. Um, and Slovakia really came into it, and it gave them a lot of uh, a lot of energy um, that they were lacking. Up until that point, they were pretty pretty average, I think. Yeah. And Wales, and I think that just sort of shows how well Wales did to keep their heads and to come back into it in in the way that they did. If that was what was most I, impressive. I tell you was who, who else did well to keep his head. Williams when he got elbowed in the head. Oh yeah, that was awful from your boy Martin Skirtle. Yeah, uh, well, boy you know, for now gone soon. Yeah, yeah, but he's, he's not going to be here for much longer. He belongs in Turkey. No, no disrespect, Turkey. But and he, he uh, also put in an awful challenge. I, I forget who. I think it was on Ramsey. No, it was on Ben second, Davis. Ben Davis in the second half. Yeah, which was who did make the exceptional terrible. block. I know we talked about Hamsik's run. That block is as good as a goal. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can't uh, there was a lot in this game that happened. Well, I mean, there's two, there's kind of two things to talk about there. You went in the skirtle direction, which when I mean, we could talk about for ages, but he, he's basically a bit of a moron, and he's not oh, that good at defending. Skirtle's direction. Um, <laughs> you certainly would not. Uh, the, the Welsh are playing an interesting system, and obviously going into the games against England coming up as well. Be interesting to see how we cope with that as it, as an English team. But they're mm. playing a three at the back. They're essentially just playing two left backs because they're playing Ben, ben Davis. Uh, as a defender, I think it, I, I, I don't know if this is true or not, or if he's just a better defender. But I think he's playing as a centre back on the left side because he's a bit taller than uh, Neil Taylor. And that's uh, how that's, it worked at school, wasn't it? Right, you're taller, yeah. you're centre back. I or thought, goal. I, I'd like to think that's what it's based on. They've just sort of put, put them back to back and gone. Well, you're taller, you're centre back. That's what I'd like think, to think uh, happened. Yeah, it will be very interesting to see how because obviously I would say on the evidence of last night and, and, and sort of on a, in other matches, England one of England's biggest strengths is our four really good athletic attacking fullbacks and whether um, Hodgson will try and overload those wide areas to get at those single kind of fullback mm. the wing backs uh, particularly Chris Gunter I think you, you know if you have I know he had a poor game last night but you know Sterling and Rose overlapping etc um, on Gunter I think that could be a, a, an area that England could exploit <clears throat> uh, it would be interesting to see how that matches up and, and whether Coleman who I think deserves a lot of credit tactically uh, which I'll touch on in a second it'll be interesting to see whether he does um, go to, to four at the back maybe to combat that threat that England pose I did say that Coleman deserves quite a lot of credit because I think people are quite quick to criticise him obviously he hasn't had a stellar club career but um, the way he set up uh, Wales yesterday in particular uh, I mean they've not been playing three at the back for very long but then he was also playing Johnny Williams down the middle a kind of yeah. as a, almost as a false nine type thing sort of Cesc Fabregas role and that allowed Bale in particular to sort of and Ramsey to to kind of just float in and around him and do do how whatever they wanted I think that was a really really interesting way to do it and then we saw in the second half Robson Carney can come on uh, and offer that sort of focal point obviously he had a knock before and he may have started with him but what he did with Williams was was pretty impressive actually tactically um, yeah it should be said about him as well 22 years of age I think it was his 13th cap yeah. yesterday um, he's not been in enough long and he's yeah he's no but, it, but I thought he played really really really, really well should have had a penalty <laughs> from the oh, Martin Skull yeah, elbow um, I mean we'll, we'll briefly look onto it before we go on um, obviously England coming up for Wales Jack I, I am as an English fan I am scared of Gareth Bale it, it's I've got this weird image in my head of it's going to be a very English tournament in terms of we go into the game in Slovakia needing a win. Yeah, and we I leave get it, it though. To the two last nil. minute. Two nil. Yeah, I could sit standard two nil. It's going to be. It's good. going to be a draw again. I'm... I've got a feeling draw against Wales, and there's all this pressure going into the final game, and we either bottle it or do it spectacularly. There's no middle ground in have... England. The... I've got mixed feelings about this game. I'm not really sure because obviously on paper we know that England have the stronger players. I think, and we'll talk about this in a minute when we talk about Hodgson, it is a tactical battle between two not managers not renowned for their tactics, but as I said, Coleman's been quite impressive recently with Wales. Um, and that the, the, the battle of systems, I think, is actually more important in this game than it will be in many others because Wales have just switched to that three at the back system and they've, they've mm. got some joy with it. And how Hodgson will react to that 
um, and how maybe Coleman will react to the strength of England that the full backs especially will be really interesting to see and I think there's actually more kind of nuance to this game than just oh it's all you know British players and it, kind of compare it on paper you know Premier League blah 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 yeah. um, I think to, to quickly touch on Bale uh, the Bale factor I thought that he obviously he can pull something out of nothing there was a fairly uh, a long period in that game against Slovakia where he kind of quietened down a little bit and I think if we can correspond uh, we as in England obviously we're all English I think if, if England can have those uh, good spells and, and try and um, exploit the fact when he, he you know he can't because he can't be 100 100 miles an hour all the time bail you know it has to be a bit of ebb and flow I think if we can pick our times to to really apply the pressure to Wales there could be some joy there and I'm not obviously he's dangerous but I don't think it's it's totally uh, impossible to sort of nullify him yeah well, let's move on um, three teams did really well in their opening game you know got the win uh, you know perfect start dream start we then come to England, everyone. And I'll kind of preface this now, you know, touch on it there. We are England fans. The chances are we may spend a little bit longer on this than the as other well, games. I assume most of our listeners as well, you know. Yeah. We we feel differently. We had a little sort of little chat before heart we started recording. Heart. I feel like we all feel a little bit differently towards it. I feel like Jack's the most sort of middled out of all of us. Kino's relatively positive, And I think we're a shambles. Well, you begin then. We'll start good and end and uh, start bad. And then start end the bad. Good, the good, yeah. I mean, there's so many things I feel like we can pick out. I, I feel like... I'll, I don't I'll, fully I'll, disagree with you as well. I'll I'd start, like to preface that. I'll start with a positive that I think the way we set up was fine, actually. I had no issue with it. We kind of talked on it before. Having um, Lallana on one side, Sterling on the other. Uh, Kane sort of up top through the middle. Much like Spurs have played, everyone. It was quite Spursy the way we uh, we set up and decided mm-hmm. to play. As was the performance. Very Spursy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'll pick on a few players I thought did very well as well. I'm going to start positive. This is going to get... Slowly progressively rest. more uh, yeah Carl Walker great game I, I, I've had lots of doubts about Carl Walker throughout his career I thought yesterday he was uh, he was one of our better players Wayne I, I Rooney think, in the middle I think I think oh, just on, quickly on Walker I think this was a game where he actually came of age uh, as, as a sort of a top level footballer I thought he was excellent I thought he was our best player as, yeah. as you might say that's a problem if he is our best player yeah, but I, I'll, we'll he was very that. impressive um Rooney, I thought played. I, I didn't think he. Were, some people were saying he was great. I thought he was good. I thought he was like. I thought he was good. I think yeah, sometimes he's quite out of position. I think sometimes his desire to get forward leaves us hopelessly exposed uh, at the back, and that is a big fear coming into this Welsh game. That if our midfield decide to bomb on like that, if we decide to play the exact same way, for example, Wales will beat us because if we bomb on like that, Ramsey and, uh, and Bale will exploit that space that he leaves, and, and Alan. D- Dyer can't do, like manage both of them. So it's a problem. Yeah, of course. And you say Ali did it as well. That was the problem. You had yeah. Ali and Rooney both thinking, "Oh, we've got to help Harry out." So they ran forward. You've already got Sterling bombed on. Full backs have gone. You've got Dyer, Kale, and Smalling at the back against a better team. We will be punished. And this is where it turns, everyone. R- Russia, I mean, if you are Russian and listen, I'm very sorry about what I'm about to say, but Russia are shit, okay? Akin They're not good. I've always rated him. No, because okay, that, that moment was the only good thing they did. Even their goal was crap, right? But the, the save from feed was great. It was, was fantastic <laughs> from the Rooney thing. But do you know how, okay, for those that have been listening to the preview shows, I don't rate the Czech Republic. Guess what happened in the pre-tournament friendlies? Czech Republic beat Russia. Russia aren't very good. Chelsea Russia are one of the, the worst teams thing. in the tournament, right? We've seen, we've seen every other team in the tournament so far come through, scrape victories because they know that that's what he's supposed to do. Roy Hodgson, and I, I was worried about this going into the tournament, has been gifted a team and he's got, with, with Tottenham players that have played well this season, but have also shown a mental fragility when it comes to getting the job done. And to, to go with that in the first group game, where it's so important to stay disciplined and so, so important to create things and to and to and to like cause problems for other teams, we are the most predictable team in the tournament. There is not another team like us. You know exactly what you're gonna what we're gonna do at every point. You can guess the substitutions before they happen. So if I can do that, sat at home as an England fan, I'd like to think that the people that are employed by the nations can do the same thing. And they can look at our England team and go, I know exactly what Raheem Sterling's going to do because he's so one-dimensional. It's so so much so, it's painful when he's on the left. The, the key example, you remember sort of about 80 minutes in, Sterling ran down the right-hand side. Did, did you, could you tell what he was going to do? Uh, sorry, down the left-hand side. He was going to hit it to his right and then were... try a little nutmeg and it but, not but, it, but it completely failed. They show him down the line and he doesn't have I don't know what it is with, with Raheem but he doesn't have enough composure to cut back play it inside or just beat I think, the man Raheem you I think are on, so fast I think on Sterling I um, I agree it wasn't his best game last night I think that uh, his 
confidence is obviously not that high and well uh, he well he did sort of I don't I don't think that it was lacking in effort or even sort of um, in that regard I think that his decision making which is com- comes from his low confidence was not good I think uh, and I agree as well out on the left it's very predictable you can maybe play him uh, down the centre or, or uh, in an area where he could have a little bit more freedom that comes from confidence too uh, I, I do agree that I think uh, Roy should look to not play him in the next game I right. we can get on to Vardy in a bit yeah I'll, I'll continue um, <laughs> sorry, sorry boys I just have to get this out I could have done this last night for about 40 minutes on my own I, I genuinely could have done um, Henderson, Sturridge, Wilshire, Barkley Rashford Vardy bring like yes, you well done. You brought Jack Wilshere on for Rooney. This is the other point I, I, I was going to make. Too. Honestly, yeah. if, it, if that was as obvious as anything, like you could kind of tell that even Rooney was going to get subbed and Wilshere was going to come on. Why call up Marcus Rashford? Why not? Why call up Jamie Vardy? Why call up Ross Barkley if in a game where it needs something a little bit extra, you don't bring any of the, Daniel Sturridge? Bring one of them on. Every single one of those players would have changed the game. Harry Kane had a poor game. So I don't care, Roy, if you've started the system to play in a Tottenham way and gone, oh, this is what we're going to do. We're going we're to play in a Tottenham way. Look how successful they were all season. Funny enough, Roy, you don't have all the Tottenham players. You don't have Bruce Dembele. You don't have Christian Eriksen. You don't have the two defenders that were, the world, that were superb this season. So change it up. And his inability to do so has cost us that game the, to, the, to the point that we shouldn't have drawn this game because it shouldn't have been 1-0. It should have been 3 or 4. Because, as I say, Russia are a poor side. Defensively, poor as well to, to, to concede the goal. I'm angry. I'm really I angry. Think, can the I point come in the I was, middle ground? Yeah, you go sure. in the middle ground. Well, I've been severely depressed by Ben's bit, so I will. No, I'm just agree, annoyed agree on that. But I, yeah. So go, the issue go. I have here is opening ten minutes. I don't want to say the perfect start because England don't get a goal, but England look in control. They're having the ball. They're playing it around quite nicely. I'm sat there going, "Oh, maybe we won't do so bad this international tournament." First half got a score in a game that well football is a sport it's about phases it's about when you have those spells of dominance making it count and you know getting that vital thing that you need which is goals didn't get anything we had some half chances but there weren't any super clear cut chances I thought Kane was a little bit linear in his movement I felt like Lalana probably should have scored I felt like Sterling just looked a little bit off the boil at times he didn't look terrible but he didn't. None of those three players up top for England looked like scoring, despite how dominant we were behind them. We get at half time. I'm sat there going, "Well, if we play like that, we're probably going to win." Now the issue here is that Russia are never going to play as badly in the second half as they did in the first half. It would have been impossible for them to play as badly. And in the second half, 15 minutes gone, Russia grew into the game. Yes, they're not a great side, but England weren't dominant. They weren't creating chances. And after 60, 65 minutes, you're sat there thinking, something's got to change here. You know, you've got to make a difference. And I'm sat looking at the bench. Roy's doing nothing. Dyer scores. And everyone, you know, goes, right, well, we've been the better team in the first half. The second half, you know, it's been a little bit closer, but we're ahead. Two points. We've scored through the virtue of an absolute kind of insane free kick. A moment of brilliance is what got England in a winning position. Secondly, wasn't even a free kick. We were very lucky. Going on from that point, 73 minutes, you're one nil up. This, this is just like one rant after the other. Sorry, yeah, sorry. I mean, I could come, I could come you, in on, you, on you, numerous you, points there, but go on, I'll let you, you carry you're on. You're looking at this game. It's we're one nil. The 17 minutes left. Make a fucking change. Pardon my French. It was that explicit. It was that <laughs> bad. Said it shit. was that bad. You look at the the strike force for England though there wasn't a lot there as I said in the first half they didn't look like scoring the three players that you had and Ben picked up on it when you look at our bench when you've got players like Sturridge Barkley Rashford you know Vardy as well players who can come on in that final third and give Russia something to worry about, about. Russia have got to commit men going forward in this game they're one goal down you're playing for yeah. wins in your opening game or at least to get a point you know they're going to hit you on the attack I think get someone on with some fresh legs and some pace the issue I here that is that was Roy- that, hang on that can I jump in, Jack? Yes. I think that was that was the of because just to try and break up these sort of monologue. I think the to, to, to as I said to jump in there, Jack. I think the most obvious change to make, and this is my one issue. Uh, well, not my one issue, but one of the main issues I had with how Hodgson handled the game was that uh, immediately after we scored the first goal, I would have made a sub 
Um, and, and it's not a defensive substitution to bring on someone like Jamie Vardy or Sturridge because it would have made us a more more potent attacking threat on the break. Um, and, and as Russia were obviously going to come on to us following the goal in the final stages, I think that was the, the one, the obvious thing that anyone could see that Hodgson should have done um, was to make that change early. I think the Wilshire for Rooney one's fine um, because they both play in, in this team a fairly similar role and, and Rooney probably can't go for 90. Wilshire was good when he came on as well. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, that, well, there was yeah. that one spark, wasn't there, where you thought, that's why he's in the team. He played a little yeah. one-two, came was offside, but it was that one little mo- moment you thought, we haven't seen that the entire game. So for him to come in and do that, I was I thought was really positive. And and I think yeah, and I think it's fine for Wilshire and Rooney to sort of dovetail on and off the bench in that way. Actually, I'd quite like to see him do that because I think while well, they play the same position, they both play in slightly different ways. So that's good. Um, but that sub was obvious. The the Vardy one was also obvious, and it should have been made well. You know, he should have been on the pitch. Even him or Sturridge, or as you say, Rashford, an attacking change could have actually helped us to hold on to that lead and possibly get another. I think. Do, you, do you know what I, I, I'm gonna it's me again, everyone? Um, I feel like the the issue is that if Roy's not going to make the change, then like before before the free kick, we should have made the change way before that. Like Jack said, yeah, sixty five. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. There's not even said done it after fifty. Give it another five minutes. See the exact same thing happen where we're not breaking them down. We, we went in nil nil. Remember, we also we had a great first half. I mean, a nil nil at half time against Russia is not a great first half. It's like it's a base to work from, and then and then the failure to work from it makes the first half pointless. This is international football. You can't have one good first half and in the second half blow it and get lucky with a free kick. Like it, it was a great free kick. Dyer deserves a lot of credit for it. And yes, free kicks are part of the game, so you can take credit for it. But he he hasn't taken it. Any direct free kick for Spurs this season. Yeah, in, I mean, what's in, up? Oh, Kane's on, on picking corners, so who knows what's going on? Um, we'll get onto that in a minute because that's. Yeah. I think that's annoying everyone, whether you're a football but, fan or not. Yeah, my mum complained. Annoying. She rang Milton. Going, Have you seen Kane's <laughs> on corners? Why is Harry? Why is Harry that nice Harry Kane taking okay, corners? Okay, let's talk about this. Why is Kane on corners? Wayne, if, if anyone's going to right, <laughs> this is the logic in the England team, right? That we've gone. Okay, who can strike the ball well? Well, Kane's scored loads of goals this season. You see, we've seen he's got a he fantastic. He must kick the ball well. His right foot must be magnificent. Rooney, have you scored this season? Oh, about eight bars. No, 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 forget it. Kane, Harry, go and take a corner, whips it in, Gary Cahill smashes it. Right, he's the corner taker. <laughs> what should be happening is Ray Rooney, probably our most technically proficient player, and also five foot eight, five foot nine, should be taking the corners over six foot one or whatever he is. Harry Kane. The, the, Goal the, the, the gripe the that I've got yeah. here is that it's like when you're at school and you you know when you first moved up to eleven aside and you could never quite get a corner in the box. So yeah. what they've done is they've got Rooney and Kane on the training field and gone, kick it. Whoever kicks it furthest <laughs> has corners. That's how yeah. they do it. They've gone down the driving range. I just don't understand. I can I can maybe understand the free kicks bit, right, if he really fancies yeah, it. I mean, he shouldn't be taking them based off the few free kicks he had in the game. No, no, exactly. But I can I can understand that. The corners bit I don't get at all, really. I, I, I don't understand that. I, I would like and to there think, are players like, who can take them. In well, I would like to think that if... I, sorry that they're both Liverpool players I can't help they were called up but I don't think if Henderson or Milner are on the chances are they might be taking them because I think like they're both in for Liverpool so I feel Again, like though, I, I'd give him to Rooney yeah I'd course. give him to Rooney as well I don't know why Rooney's not taking I know he's a, uh, technically he's a goal scorer as well but not, not necessarily in the last C- couple of years can I go back to my run? I mean, can I talk about the fact we all play at different speeds when we go forward and it doesn't make any sense and that Roy's gone, oh, Madame Lallana, he's a little bit creative, he's a little bit like Ericsson. Now we need someone who's a little bit fast. Well, I mean, Lamella's not really quick, but Raheem's pretty quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll just put them all together. We'll get Kane and Ali there. Oh, now we needed the holding player. Oh, actually, Eric, you do that for Tottenham, don't you? You play there then. Right. Moussa Dembele. Is he in Belgian? Okay. Wayne. Wayne. I know you've done it for United. Five games, mate. St- stick in front. Be Moussa Dembele, boss and Wayne Rooney. Be Moussa Dembele, because we are Tottenham, everybody. I, we are Tottenham mm. from the lane. That's what they're doing in, uh, in the Can hotel. Can I just say, on that, that point, one thing that oh. really grinded my gears was pre-game. Oh. They were talking about how po- like the pundits were talking about, oh, it's great, you know, it's really brave of Hodgson to play Rooney in centre mid. You know, it's something that he's not done. He's been criticised for not making the cutthroat decisions. He's made one there. I'm sat there thinking, I- I'd rather have Wiltshire start in centre mid. The problem is, right, Rooney's had a good game, so it polarises everything. Oh, of, of course it does. Uh, but I think I feel well. like you can praise him and go, he's, done, he's been really brave to play Rooney there. And as you said, Rooney did have a good game. The issue is, all of the praise that Hodgson could have got for that decision, completely undone by his inability to make subs. In this game, Liverpool, uh, Liverpool it felt like Liverpool when Milner <laughs> came on. <laughs> you get you get stick for that. I mean, that was last World Cup, Jack. We were Liverpool. <laughs> we're Spurs, Spurs yeah, now, we're sorry. Spurs, we're Spurs but, um, this time. In, the, in this game, we made two subs. Two. 
One was in the 87th yeah. minute, bringing on Milner. I yeah. mean, people criticise the lack of experience and Rooney going off as being the reason England conceded. That is nothing to do with it. I'm sorry. On an international stage, yes, mm. experience comes into a little bit. I don't think having someone like Rooney is the difference between us conceding that goal against I think, Russia no, and I, not. I, I agree that I don't think it was the direct cause. However, I do think that there, you know, to have a, a, an experienced, calming head... James you know, Milner came on. To say, yeah, James to Milner say, came so on. I'll take, I, that I, point. I, I, I'll take that point if he brings Rashford on, but he's brought, he's brought Milner I, I mean, so that, was something, 50 cat, 60 that, that was something... That, uh, sorry to all the viewers who thought I was going to be the middle ground. I've, I've, I've changed my <laughs> tune. As I said, I, I felt positive after 10 minutes. The more I think about the last 18 minutes of it, the more it annoys me. In, the, okay. in this game, you look at England's bench, it's a fantastic bench. It's a very good bench. I think as an England fan, it's one of the best benches we've had in a while. Yes, the starting eleven isn't that great, but in terms of a bit of, you well, know... Why don't we put the bench on the starting eleven? Ha- hashtag, well, great, great point, Kino. Great point. Why don't we play more of the bench in the actual team? It's a great question. Put the bench on the pitch in the centre circle. Sorted. Because after... After 50 minutes, Adam Lallana's done piss all, everybody. So I don't know why he's still on the pitch. Yes, oh, guess what? He plays for Liverpool, everyone, as well. But get him off. Raheem Sterling is a, is a one-track pony. He's doing nothing. Get him off! The, the issue is... Okay. I'm so annoyed. Sorry, everyone. The, I'm so annoyed. The, 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 it's got quite ranty. I should, I should say, I, I'm going to... We're going we're gonna, to we're calm down, OK? First group game, got a point. Didn't lose. Would you? I, well, I was about to say, would you like me to go? We've done the ugly. We've done the bad. Shall I yeah. do a bit of good? Yeah, I mean, I'm going like, to walk off because I can't bear to hear. Yeah, it. I'm like going to take my headphones because I won't be able to yeah, shut my okay. mouth. Right. Good. Good afternoon, everyone. I am now going <laughs> like to. Uh, to out, yeah, I'm, I'm now going to outline some of the good things about the England performance, and that although there were some mistakes, I think the main problem is is between Roy Hodgson's ears. Uh, although there were some mistakes, it's not all bad, guys. It's not all bad. Firstly, we are, if we do beat Wales, which I think we can do and we probably will do, we're still in the driving seat to, to top the group. That's the first thing because I don't I don't really know what will happen with Slovakia and Russia. It would be nice for Slovakia to win and that would put us even in an even better position, probably the ideal situation. So, firstly, teams draw their first game quite often. It's fine. That's okay. Secondly, I thought that there were standout performances. Walker being one, obviously, whether you want to debate whether that should be happening, then that is true. Uh, are you still I mean, he shouldn't guys, be our best player, way? should he? Oh, the, you're over there. I thought you That's were. The, he should. Um, so I'll come. So I'll sit back yeah, down again. Yeah, he should be the best player, Kino. You, you know, he played oh, well. Should be the best player. I understand that. I think that um, if Hodgson hasn't made the errors that he did um, in the substitutions, I think people would have been going crazy for him playing Rooney there because I actually thought that Rooney was pretty good there, and it, it, it could all. It, it's provided a kind of template for what I think he can do. Uh, in the rest of his career, actually, for England and for United, because he did look really good there, playing not not in the the number ten role, not in the deep line role, but in the sort of middleman of that of that three man midfield. I thought he looked good there, and, and it's I, been a while. So, sorry, it's, Kino, I've got to jump in. Sorry, <laughs> he looks good there because we're playing Russia. Like, if we I mean, play he, anyone good, he's not going to look as good. I don't, I don't. I'm not sure I agree with that because I think Rooney, in terms of his technical proficiency, is is. Well, he, you know, five, do, five do you years. Know okay, I'll put this way, Kino. He's I th- still pretty good there. I think Dave Edwards, Joe Allen, and Aaron Ramsey will cause a big problem for our midfield next time round. I think Bale will be a factor, but I think our midfield will get outworked by the Welsh midfield, who I thought were, were brilliant yesterday. I, I, I genuinely th- think will be outworked. I think you can level the same criticism at someone like Dave Edwards, who's been played as a holding midfielder, when for Wolves he's been playing as a number ten for five or six years. He's playing as a holding man in that Welsh midfield, in the same way that you can that Rooney slightly not in his what you would call conventional position I think they've got problems too I think the Rooney will stand out in that because it will be Edwards that he's sort of going up against I think the two quicker men the younger guys will be the ones that are going after Ramsey I think for instance Dyer will be will be sort of shackled to Ramsey I don't know yeah. if he'll be the man who will have bail but I think that midfield on paper should should be should be better I think the the differentiation that might occur between Wales and England is that sort of team spirit and, and the kind of the galvanisation that, that that win gave them I think yeah. it'll be a mental battle between England and Wales because if England get it right in their head and Roy gets it right um, in the system, which is obviously the biggest question mark, uh, we should beat Wales. With okay. that in mind, I, I think that to, to sort of summarise the England performance, I don't think it was awful. I think that the players almost, it was a good performance from some, from many of the players on the pitch. I think it is the manager 
uh, and tactically that cost us. But it's not the end of the world, as you say. We, we, we were good for a few, yeah. for, for a half, and if we can translate that to, to later games in the tournament, that's fine. And to be honest with you, I would have, I'd much prefer this and then us go on to beat Wales and maybe qualify well, um, than, than for us to have spanked Russia and everyone going crazy. And then, well, you know, I, we would I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather we spanked Russia. But I'll come on to the point there. I think... Be- beating Russia with a free kick would have paid over some pretty big cracks in our squad. Oh, for and I'd, sure. I'd be fear- I'd be fearful that yeah, we would have no, played sorry, the same thing. That I'd be fearful we would have played the same thing. I think this is one of the better things that could have happened because we didn't lose, but we've been taught. We've, we've basically been shown like if you play that like yeah. that again, you will not be going through. Like yeah. there's a, there's a possibility that we won't go through, or we'll play. We'll, we'll come third and have to play Belgium or Portugal, whatever it is. Someone very good, essentially. Yeah. So so that is that's the fear factor within. What's happening? I think we could even play someone like Spain. I mean, that's tournament over. Essentially, if we play think, any of those, think, we're in big I think trouble. What you've, I think what you've sort of summed up there is, is pretty much my view on it. That sort of, although I was pretty pissed last night, you were obviously still pissed. I yeah. Think sort of uh, one day on, I think that we, it, it's not, it's we could have been shown up, or, or those cracks could have been shown it, it maybe later on in the tournament. Roy has time to address the issues that um, were ob- what, that were shown in that game. Some of them are his own caused by himself um, so I think that while we've still got time to get it right it's probably the best thing that could have happened because um, if like you say if we do, if, if that free kick and, and we hadn't conceded the goal uh, we might have carried on as it were uh, and yeah. we might have Let's, been, yeah sorry Keir, I, I, I just feel like we should wrap it up we've got 25 no, minutes on right, England right. um, shall we do some questions we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up at an hour boys I think yeah yeah that's um, fine. Let's let's go on to some questions. So we've had lots sent in. Thank you at for the fun show on Twitter. Uh, Jack, can I come to you for the questions? You can. I'm please. just getting our notifications up right now. We've got someone. <laughs> let me. Sorry, I'm throwing you. I'm throwing you a little bit there. So, I apologise. Well, someone's asked, will Spurs win England the Euros? I mean, they might do, but not if we try and play like them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I can. Yeah. Their players are their players are certainly like Kane and, and Ali are great. I, I hate to come back to England for a question, but the FM Gaffer has asked: Do you think that a switch to a diamond should happen? Slash B, will it happen? Like, is there an argument I, to go for a four one two one two now? I think, I think there is an argument, um, but I, and I and I worry that uh, Hodgson is the kind of manager that will base it too much on those friendlies and, and less on what logically could happen if we do play a diamond and we play it well. I think it, there, are, there are certain teams in the tournament who will be flummoxed tactically by England playing a diamond um, and, and it could be a really good option to go to and obviously if you want to try and incorporate Kane and Vardy into it I'm not sure Rooney can play in that 10 so it then it creates questions as to whether he would still play in the 3 behind the 1 maybe uh, and you maybe put someone like Lallana or a Barkley or a Sterling in, in the number 10 I think it's, we, sorry, we certainly have the full backs to play it and we have the two strikers to play it but whether it can work is I don't think it works against Wales because I think the fact they play a five and they will do it against yeah. England will oh, really yeah. restrict yeah. our wing backs. I think against Slovakia, yeah, it probably work. I don't necessarily think it will work against four, Wales. Four, two, I think flat midfield, Mike Bassett would be proud. Well, I actually think I actually think the way the Wales set up is a real struggle for England going to the next game because I think Wales's formation is quite comfortable against whatever we play. It's quite clear we're going to play one or two ways. We're going to play like a four, like a four, four, three, three slash four, two, three, one, depending on how you look at it. Or we're going to play a diamond, and I think both of those actually suit Wales quite well. The, te- the I think the teams that Wales will struggle against are the teams that set up a little bit more defensively, and, and that's when Wales will struggle to break it down because they don't have as many players like flying forward. But I, 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 I don't maybe, know if Royal change it. I actually don't know what Royal do. Cause I think how about this? I think if, if yeah. we're talking about how England might tactically beat Wales, I think you could make a case for us to try and play. Um, if if Sterling, if he does start Sterling again, I would. And this is our problem with the fact sending someone like uh, Townsend home. We don't really have many wingers. I think overloading. If you assume that Wales are going to play that three at the back, overloading those wide areas could actually get you a lot of joy. Because I don't think with those three centre backs quite narrow, I don't think the central striker will have. Uh, you know, we won't be able to get in behind. A Vardy won't work against Wales. So overloading the wide areas could actually be where uh, we could get some crosses in. Um, so that could be an option. Maybe yeah. a four four two, possibly, or a yeah. wider diamond. Can we get another question, Jack? Yeah, we can. We've got one here from let me find it. Jordan Spears, who asked, Why do England fans get excited about the Arrows? No, they're not going to win but go mental when they lose. Because uh, we I, care. I've got a great answer for this. I've got a care. great answer for this. That I wait two years for international tournament and it is the pinnacle of like football elite competition. You can talk about the Champions League if you want, but this is the most excited, nervous you get. 
watching your national team play. It has a different atmosphere, play. doesn't it? You're, everyone's a lot more patriotic, yeah. and it's not like everyone in your area sports like different teams. It's like the whole nation bounds together. Yeah, I think all season there's there's so much sort of disagreement and argument between rival fans, of like especially the bigger clubs. You just see just bollocks sent either way. But when England play, you've you've qualified. It's taken two years to qualify for this sort of grand event. So. There's no point in going, I mean, based on my rant today, you might think I'm extremely negative. Before the tournament, I was quite excited. I'm still excited. I still think that there's plenty to play for. And I look forward to this. So for me to go into it and be like, oh, shit, might as, well, might as well not even bother. Like, I feel like that's the wrong attitude. You should go in thinking, let's give this a go. We're playing then, etc. We should have that. I, I think if you go in negatively, then... <laughs> like, what's the point? But you can, you can yeah. we always come out negatively because we like, at the end of the day, we're not very good, so... And I actually think I think this time around we could be good, and that's what's what makes it almost more frustrating. Nah, I this that time in the I think, World Cup as well. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. I, I think Euro 2012 and maybe even 2014, um, there was a kind of thing like we're building something a little bit. I think this team is beginning to arrive now, um, and, and that's what will make it more frustrating if we do fail, because there there is a sense that maybe a better manager could possibly mm. get more out this team. All right, I think I've got see. one last question. For James Milner is versatile. <laughs> no, sorry. I've got one last no, no, question no, 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 from Epic Pandas on Twitter. Asked, apart from England, what teams do you want to do well? I feel like we should each pe- that's pick. That's a good a question. Team, a team, like that. a team yeah. that we want to do well. Not, and we can't pick a team who's already played. Let's pick a team each to represent. At the World Cup, I had Japan. Who's your team that you're going <laughs> to stand by? Japan. Um, I'm now looking I mean, through. You've I'm said I can, one. You've said I can't have them, but I mean, I'd quite like Wales to do well. I'm just being honest. I know they're in our group and stuff, but I would quite like Wales to do Wales to do well. I want all the home nations to do well. Should we avoid the home nations? I was going to say Northern Ireland. Yeah, them? let's do that. <laughs> let's let's avoid them. I mean, I feel like um, I'd go Czech. No, I'm joking. Uh, I'll go <laughs> Croatia. I will see Croatia do well. You like Croatia? I'd like Croatia. Croatia. Yeah. I'm going to go with Jack. Iceland. 9% of the population of Iceland has gone to the Euros. Yeah, we talk, we spoke about that on the preview show that uh, you weren't a part of. I know, I'm good yeah, about that. Uh, but I, I'm going to, I'm back in Iceland. <laughs> All right, Kino, who's your, who's your, your um, sort of, who do you I want to see? Do you I mean? haven't, I haven't really chosen, I, I've got two in mind. They're not really underdogs. I'd like to see Belgium do well because I feel like they'll never have a generation of players like this for another sort of, a generation, you know, twenty thirty years. <laughs> so I, I'd like to see them do 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 well, just to kind of fulfil that promise. Maybe I'm still a bit bitter about the golden generation and all that. Mm. Um, but so I'd like to see them do well. I also kind of want to see uh, how, and we'll, we'll find out today. Obviously, I, I want to see how Spain recover from the World Cup. Whether that was a blip, whether um, they can sort of again cope after losing some of the players who brought them all that success I think that'll be interesting I'd quite like to see them do well because they've got quite a few young players as well in that team yeah. so uh, it's a, those two have interesting narratives they're not underdogs but I think that it, that it could be quite fun to see how they go yeah. I just want to apologise to everyone else that wrote questions we'll try and read more out next time I didn't intend to go on a 30 minute rant about England with Keno and Jack we, I'm sorry I apologise hopefully this doesn't happen ranty, again it's because we're passionate I feel like yeah yeah, I really right want us to, to do platform. well. That's the problem. If, if we weren't doing the podcast, I'd be sat in the shower having the same conversation with myself. Yeah. I'd be there, you know, yeah. with a glass pane in your shower <laughs> on the condensation, drawing how England should be playing next game. It's a, it's a good it's a, it was a good idea to do this game last. I feel like because if people are sick of it, they can turn off and they've got the best bit from the, from the start. <laughs> got the feature. Um, that's going to bring us to the end then if you've enjoyed this podcast do leave a rating on iTunes leave a like on YouTube uh, I shall mention now a bit late maybe but all these our podcasts go on iTunes before YouTube so that is the place to get it first uh, Jack Kino thank you for joining me thank, thank you I'm for having us going to go lay down after this thanks Kino no problem and are you alright I'm I'm good. I'm worried about you, Ben. I should be asking. Uh, you yeah, it's today. true. Actually, you should. You should. After this, I'll go deeper. Um, Jack, everything all right? Yeah, I'm gonna go watch Turkey Croatia. Now she's kicked off. I'm I've back. Yeah, yeah. Games. I'm looking forward to it. Come on, Croatia. Um, right then, from us at For the Fan Show. Find us on the social medias at ForTheFanShow.com, youtubecom slash For the Fan Show. Type into iTunes For the Fan Show. You will find us. And if you are confused by any of that, ForTheFanShow.com. So we love, we care. If we love Benji, Kino, and Jack. We'll see you again very soon. Goodbye. I don't know if I can do that for some reason, so I don't know if I can do that for It's annoying, though, isn't it? Stupid fucking owl.